In this lesson, I'll demonstrate the process for preparing a database availability group member for installing updates. So imagine in this scenario that you want to install some updates on one of your Marbox servers, uh, perhaps the monthly security updates from Microsoft or an exchange update rollup or something of that nature. So that update process needs to take services offline or it may even involve a restart of the operating system which of course is going to cause an interruption for users mailbox access. Now we could just go ahead and let the database availability group automatically fail over databases between nodes as they shut down and restart but that's not a very clean way of doing it in fact it carries some risks if that database for some reason was not able to fail over cleanly you may risk database corruption or perhaps losing some data in the process. So instead what we want to do is move all of the active mailbox database copies off a server prior to installing any updates and we want to do that in a controlled and safe manner. To begin with I have my server SID EX3 and let's have a look at which mailbox databases are currently mounted or active on this member. I can use get mailbox database with the status parameter and I'm interested in the name and also information about whether it's mounted and where it is mounted. So we can see that mailbox database 1 is currently mounted on server CDX3 and mailbox database 2 is also currently mounted on CDX3 they both have a mounted status of true so they're up and online at the moment. So I'd like to install uh, the wind, uh, monthly Windows updates on CDX3. We need to move both of those mailbox databases over to CDX4. We also need to make sure that during the update process someone doesn't inadvertently try to move the mailbox databases back to CDX3 while it's in the middle of that update process because that could cause a problem for us. Now, fortunately, Microsoft provides some very useful scripts that can help us with that process. So what we do is just change directories to the xscripts folder, which takes us straight to the, uh, in my case, C program files slash uh, Microsoft slash Exchange Server slash v14 slash scripts folder. And we can run the start DAG maintenance, uh, DAG server maintenance script and specify the server name SID EX3 and now by running that script what it will do is identify all of the active mailbox databases on that server and will verify that they are able to move to another healthy server if it detects any kinds of problems that would prevent that move from occurring it will actually show you an error and uh, prevent that move from occurring. And that script is finished now. So let's just rerun that get mailbox database command from earlier. And have a look and we can see now that both of those mailbox databases are now mounted on CDEX4. And one of the extra things that the script has also done for us is change the database copy activation policy on the server CDX3. We can see that with the get mailbox server commandlet CDX3 and we want the name and database copy and I'll just output that to a list. So name CDX3 and now has a database copy auto activation policy of blocked and we can just compare that quickly to the same setting on CDX4 which is at the default setting of unrestricted. So while CDX3 is in this blocked state the database availability group will not try to mount any mailbox databases on that server and so it's now safe for us to apply those Windows updates restart the server without the risk of someone trying to activate a mailbox database on it in the middle of that process. 
So now the updates are complete and perhaps the server has been restarted and we're ready for CDX3 to uh, perform its role within that database availability group again. Now again Microsoft provides a script for basically doing the reverse of the start DAG server maintenance script and we'll find that once again in the X scripts folder and this one is called stop DAG server maintenance and once again it uses the server name switch so I'll just put in CDX3 and that's now finished so let's have a look at the outcome of that have a look at our mailbox database copies again So those mailbox database copies are still mounted on CDX4, so there's no change there. This stop DAG server maintenance script doesn't actually move any mailbox databases around. Let's have a look at the activation policy on CDX3. And now that's been set back to unrestricted so in its current state, both of the mailbox databases are active on CDX4. But if there was the need to perform a switchover or if a failover uh, event occurred with CDX3 now in this unrestricted state, it would be able to bring those databases online. So now let's imagine that uh, we've performed that start DAG server maintenance process on uh, one server install the updates and then run the stop DAG server maintenance script on it and then switching over to the other server and so on and so forth through all of your DAG members you've started maintenance on them, installed updates, restarted them and then stopped maintenance. So you've now updated all of your DAG members with any required updates and you've got mailbox databases that are now active on all kinds of different servers uh, perhaps in a very unbalanced fashion and you want to return them all to the server that has the lowest activation preference, so the activation preference of one, indicating that that's the server where you most prefer those servers, uh, those databases to be active under normal conditions. So you could go through in the Exchange Management Console, choose each database individually, and move the active mailbox database to whichever server you wish. Or an easier way to do it is to run a script. So similar to the start DAG server maintenance and stop DAG server maintenance scripts, Microsoft has provided a script which will rebalance or redistribute those mailbox database copies. And we can choose to do so based on activation preference. So I'll just quickly have a look at the current location of my mailbox databases. Currently they're both on CDX4. Now I can redistribute the active databases, making sure that I choose the PowerShell script and not the help file. Specify the DAG name of DAG-SID. And I'm going to balance databases by activation preference. So the script analyzes the current state of play. It finds that uh, CDX3 and CDX4 each have a total of two active and passive databases. But CDX4 has two active and CDX3 has two passive. And it's determined that a move of mailbox database two from CDX4 with an activation preference of two to CDX3, which has the activation preference of one, would be appropriate. And then we're just asked to confirm that that's what we actually want to do. So I'm going to say yes. And the script goes ahead and moves that database for us. And it also asks me if I want to consider moving mailbox database one from CDX4, which has an activation preference of two, 
to CDX3, which has an activation preference of one. So I will say yes. Both of those moves were successful and the databases were returned to CDX3, which in the case of both databases has an activation preference of one. And that's the case because when I first deployed my database availability group, CDX3 was the server that hosted the original copies of those databases. So when we added CDX4 as a database copy, it automatically picked up the activation preference of two. Let's say under normal circumstances, I'd actually prefer that each of those servers had one active and one passive Marbox database. So we can go to Marbox database two, have a look at the properties of the copy on CDX4, and here's the activation preference number. And I'll decrease that to one. Now that change has taken effect, but it hasn't actually moved the active Marbox database copy over to CDX4. So let's go ahead and run that PowerShell script again to redistribute the active databases based on activation preference. So if my change of activation preference was successful, we should find that Marbox database two is moved from CDX3 over to CDX4. And there you go, the script has found that Marbox database two is sitting on CDX3, which now has an activation preference of two. And it's asking me if I'd like to move it to CDX4 which I've just set with the activation preference of one. So I'll say yes. There's our result. So now each of the Marbox servers within this database availability group have one active and one passive database.